So the way that uh, we do this today is um, with the integration feature to bug tracking as well as test case management is uh, in a sample I'll show you shortly, the ability to have unit tests that kick off certified tests and then those results uh, getting brought back to the test cases that those unit tests are associated with in Azure DevOps. We do this through the command line that certifies supported for many years. Uh, and this allows you to be able to attach those detailed results back. You can also, of course, integrate with Execution Manager, which is part of the functionality we'll be implementing this year. The results of that uh, unit test execution from Visual Studio allow you to get back the results from Certify in three formats. One is an XML file with all the test results, pass, fail, the amount of time each step took uh, to execute. We also provide you just a general uh, example of the command line execution and what actually was um, spent on the screen. If uh, you could see that DOS window during execution, you would see those details. And then finally, a PDF report that gives screen by screen uh, information about each test step uh, and the pass fail status of that. A typical architecture uh, for an Azure DevOps or TFS environment is to have a uh, machine where the uh, source code and other artifacts are stored and also where test cases and bugs are managed. This is something that then can be kicked off in a build process or in a check-in process that will then take those results, uh, compile, deploy the necessary code, and then execute via test controller the uh, process which then carries out the test and certify. There's the ability to be able to pass parameters dynamically uh, in test cases, in ADO test cases, using some specific parameters that uh, are in the sample that I provide here. And then those parameters can be used to then dynamically define which project and certify and which process needs to be executed. So this is done using what's called an associated automation, which defines the uh, pointer to that unit test or that uh, DLL uh, test library that will be executed. This can also be called from the build pipeline, one of these unit tests, passing those same parameters uh, as variables allows you to then be able to make that a dynamic <laughs> artifact so that the client project name and the uh, actual path to the process can be defined dynamically, say during a build or release pipeline. And so you simply uh, can start in my case with a uh, unit test or a coded UI test that allows you to be able to then define how you want to call the uh, process and be able to get the results back. There's a couple parameters that you can make uh, static uh, and also override dynamically at runtime from the test case. Things such as the build number that'll change with each uh, build of the build release pipeline. The certified project name and the certified process path uh, can all be set. Then of course um, the actual sample application that uh, I'll be showing you today is available for you to to use, although this will become productized and available as another standard interface in WorkSoft to be able to kick off test cases. So we won't worry about going through too much detail here about the um, code itself, but it just basically calls the certify command line passing the necessary parameters and capturing all the screen steps uh, along the way. Then of course, um, with that uh, in place, you can test this out this unit test in Visual Studio by just running it. Uh, once you execute it, the output will uh, show once the certified test finishes and all the unit uh, user interfaces that it tests finish out. Those will be those three files I mentioned that you can then review and they'll be attached and can be attached back to the test case. So to be able to work with this uh, and to be able to see test cases, that's using an associated automation which has to be uh, available and viewable through Visual Studio, specifically the uh, higher end editions such as the professional or enterprise editions uh, that allow you to be able to uh, work with the work items within Visual Studio. So once you set uh, that setting in the tools options area so that you can pull up uh, the editor, you can then go into that work item and create that test case and then simply associate that test case to the uh, DLL that represents calling the certified command line and getting the results back and that'll then be available to run even from the web interface but when you first set up the test case you'll want to do that from the Visual Studio uh, add-in using uh, the steps here to be able to enable that through Visual Studio. Once that association is in place 
it'll exist from that point forward and uh, whenever you want to execute that test case you can do that from there. If you want to be able to have Certify run in the cloud uh, in an IaaS instance, infrastructure as a service instance of, uh, of an Azure Windows VM, then uh, here's some articles that can help you with setting that up properly and making sure that you have appropriate access or with the uh, release later this year of the Execution Manager uh, plug-in or add-in uh, extension for Azure DevOps will be able to do that uh, without you necessarily having to work through all that extra infrastructure uh, on the Azure side. And of course, as I mentioned before, the ability to pass those parameters uh, is supported uh, in, in the tool itself in a couple ways. And of course, then when you go to run that test case, you can simply say that you want to run that test case with the associated automation or unit test that will then kick off certify and attach the results uh, back. The same, of course, can occur with the uh, build pipeline. Provide a few additional resources here, but let me go ahead and demo how this works in the tool itself. So first let's start with um, being able to kick off a test. So as I mentioned in, in Azure DevOps, when you have a project, you'll have a test plan. I've already created this test case through the Visual Studio interface and already associated the automation. So let me just show you where that is. Here's the test case where I can dynamically define things like the certified project or process uh, as detailed uh, steps. And then the associated automation represents the uh, unit test, Visual Studio unit test I'm going to run. In this case, it's going to run that uh, run certify test, and it's going to call the test method to run certify uh, as a unit test. And it can attach those results back to this test case. The, uh, the next step then, of course, is to um, try that out. So from Visual Studio, we have that unit test here, and it's going to have a number of uh, test methods, in this case the one test method that will kick off and execute certify, passing in all the appropriate arguments and getting the results back will occur here. We can run that like I showed with uh, some parameters so we can adjust the build number of the certify project name uh, or the path to the process and these just represent the fields that you would have here. So we've got our project name, client name, and then our path is the folder path down to the test I'm going to run. This test is just simply going to launch Salesforce, log in, take a screenshot, and log back out. So that same path is what I'm defining here. And I could, of course, pass that in dynamically if I prefer versus the static value stored here. So I'll go ahead and run this test. And this would normally, of course, be run with the associated automation. Uh, but I'll just show that here. We'll run all the tests. In this case, there's just the one. It'll call the one public test method, run certify. Certify is now executing in the background via the command line. It's carrying out the automation task to log into Salesforce, carry out the appropriate steps, take a screenshot of the main page, and log back out. So it's a pretty basic automation we run through. Those uh, results will then be attached. So we'll see here when it finishes up, it'll tell us how long it took to run, that it did run successfully. We scroll down here, we can see that there is some output. We can click on that output, and the three files I mentioned are attached here. We can see the command line output as it executed, all the steps that it carried out. We can also see the output file. This is a XML version of the results view that you would normally see. A hierarchical view saying it was 22 steps. Uh, it ran in about 16.9 seconds within Certify itself. So. Uh, that was what carried, was carried out there. And then finally, we can look at the output. Here we can see the PDF file, the standard sort of output that Certify can generate from the command line with screenshots for every step. So we can see each step as it goes in, logs in, gets to the home screen, takes a screenshot of that current screen, and then logs back off. And these exact uh, same details are the same ones that you could, of course, get from Certify itself. So when it finishes the process, these same kind of results will be available for you to view. Uh, within Certify 2, if you want to, you can see the same amount of time it took to execute. If you want to see that same XML file in the friendly results view, you can see it here. You can also parse that XML file if you need that for tracing and reporting purposes. And of course, you could generate the report result uh, details if you wanted to from Certify as well. 
So the error thing is once you do have an error uh, that happens and you might want to log a bug, how can you do that in TFS? Well, that's an integration that's supported uh, by Visual Studio and, and uh, specifically with, uh, with uh, Certify version 10.0.2 and beyond. We added the capability for you to be able to open bugs directly from the Certify results and attach those to Azure DevOps. So the way that we do that is we find one of the scenarios where we have a failure. We can kind of review these different failures, look at the screenshots. Uh, let's say we pick this one where the close failed because there was no browser reference. We can then simply right click and following our setup instructions you can integrate with uh, TFS. Uh, this also of course represents VSTS or ADO uh, since it's all the same technology just with a new term and some new capabilities. So it actually will go in, create the appropriate test case using the Azure DevOps uh, bug REST APIs. It'll actually create a new bug with the title uh, of the uh, error. And if there is a screenshot, it'll include those details so you can go in here, of course, set the severity and uh, the other priority and take some additional notes if you need to. And you can see here the screenshot that is also attached and saved with the bug. So this allows you to be able to then have that as another item in your bug tracking database. So I hope that that helped you and makes sense about how we integrate with Azure DevOps and all the capabilities that are supported for Worksoft to integrate with Microsoft Azure. And we'll be continuing to add new functionality in the coming months. Thank you.